Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, and if you're new, welcome to the channel. We are metaphorically killing two birds with one stone. <laughs> I still have some emotes that I want to draw for the Alicia videos, which I have recorded the first one. It should be out soonish. I'm not going to put a timestamp on it, uh, but definitely soonish. And you guys voted on the next story time, which is more supernatural experiences. So I'm going to share my supernatural experiences and I draw all these little emotes in the background. So firstly, thank you everybody who voted and interacted with the poll. I always appreciate it. It's a big help. I honestly don't think you'll ever realize how big of a help voting on like polls are for videos. <laughs> but anyway, so these are the rest of my supernatural experiences. And I'm also adding three that are my mom's supernatural experiences that she's talked to me about. And one of them for me isn't really a supernatural experience. It's more just like a wonder of the universe. So I'll go I'll go ahead and do it in order again. I'll also link the first supernatural story time up here in the lift somewhere. So let's go ahead and get into it. The first supernatural experience that my mom had ever experienced. She said she was about 10 or 11 at the time. She had gone, hold on, I gotta move my headphones. Okay, she had gone to a cousin's house for a sleepover. And they originally were gonna sleep outside, but then they said, you know, better safe than sorry, and had all the kids sleep in the living room. It, I don't know how many children there were. I had asked her this recently and she gave me like vague details. And I didn't ask a lot of questions cause like I was just trying to get the spooky stuff. <laughs> but there was uh, like three kids, three or four kids plus her. And they were just sleeping in the living room and she just woke up. I don't know if anybody else has had like that kind of experience where you just wake up, like something woke you up. You're not quite sure. She didn't wake up in like a sweat or anything. She just kind of woke up and she wasn't like scared. And um, for anybody who has glasses, you know the struggle of waking up without your glasses, how blurry everything is. Um, but she had woken up to this hazy, somewhat transparent figure next to her. And she said that she thought it was, like, one of her relatives, and she sh she sat up. But that's when she got closer to it from sitting up, and she realized that it was transparent, and it was hazy. And she said that there was just this finger and the finger was the only thing that was more solid than the rest of the thing. Like, the humanoid ghost thing. And it was just pointing at her. I don't know. I don't know. I think- I guess she's the chosen one. <laughs> I guess she's the chosen one. And she is the reason why I have no sense of self-preservation, I swear. Like a cat, she swatted at it. <laughs> she fucking swatted at it. And it disappeared, it vanished, it went swoosh, and it was gone. And she went right back to bed. I had asked her if she, like, she felt scared when she saw it, and she said no. Like, she wasn't scared at all. She was a little c confused, but, like, not scared. She didn't feel like she was in danger or anything. And she went right back to bed. What a brave woman <laughs> for a 10, 11 year old. Uh, yeah. So that was her first, like, supernatural spooky experience. The second one is actually kind of like a continuation. In my first spooky, scary story time, I had mentioned how my uncle had passed and we would go visit his grave sometimes. Yeah, my mom claims that she, like, felt and kind of saw his ghost the night he passed. Yeah. So, uh, it was late. He had passed away in his sleep. I forget if I said that in the first video, but he passed away in his sleep. Um, they believe it was like a heart attack or a stroke that just took him, took him out. Uh, I mean, yeah, okay, it couldn't be his liver shutting down from being an alcoholic, I guess, but heart attack it is. <laughs> I'm kidding. I loved him. He was an asshole, but I loved him. Uh, but... Uh, it was late. My mom had gotten me to bed. She was still working at this time and she was just unwinding from, you know, a days of work. So I was tucked in. She was just watching TV in the living room. And she said that she felt just a familiar presence 
and out of the corner of her eye, she saw this shadowy figure walking into the hallway, into the back bedroom where I was. And I had asked, did you get up and follow it? And she said no, because it felt familiar. It felt safe. She didn't feel like we were in danger. Well, good, good to know, I guess. I it could have been a kidnapper for all you know, but what a, what a bitch. I swear, she is the reason I have no sense of self-preservation. <laughs> really, I really don't. I like, ugh. Anyway, um, she said it felt familiar. She felt safe. She didn't feel like we were in danger. And I was asleep. I didn't wake up crying or anything. I was dead ass asleep. I slept through the night. And I was still pretty young. I was like four, three, four, five-ish. Really young. I don't actually don't think I started school yet. Or it, I had just started. So I might have been in kindergarten. Oh, no, wait. I think I was in kindergarten. Okay, so I was like five, five, six-ish six -ish, actually. Now that I'm really thinking about it. But anyway. Um, you know, the night passes, the next morning she gets a call. I don't know if it was my aunt or another relative, but she got a call and she was told, he dead, <laughs> he died, he gone. And she, like, that's, that's when she said that that's what she, she said that that's when she knew that it was him coming to say his final goodbyes to us is what she said. That's why it felt like safe and familiar because that was her older brother. My uncle is her older brother. So that's why he, she said it felt safe and familiar, even though he was an asshole. But yeah, that's spooky. There's stories of people like just getting that feeling and having like an experience with a relative coming to say their final goodbyes. Luckily, I was asleep. I probably fucking would have seen him, honestly, if I was awake, probably or like knew he was there and he'd probably freak me the fuck out as a child. <laughs> I would have probably run to my mama screaming. But yeah, so the third and final spooky experience to my knowledge that my mom has had is actually with a UFO. In my first video, I have mentioned that I live in the Appalachian Mountains. This, we've moved, we moved here. So this happened um, my freshman year. Yeah, my freshman year. And because we live so far away from town and other kids live so far away from town because it's farmland um, and, you know, a mountain, we have to get up super duper early. <laughs> like in when I lived in cities and towns, uh, we had to get up as early as like five or six. Here, some kids have to get up as early as four and three. I only had to get up at five. That was the earliest I would ever get up. And the bus would come around around 6.15 for me. Now, the bus and the school have a see and pick up policy where they have to physically see you at your bus stop or they will not stop to pick you up. Even if you're running late to your bus stop, they will drive past you. I didn't know that at the time. Well, no, I knew that at the time. I didn't know that like when I first started. <laughs> school because nobody told me so i missed my first day of school being picked up by the bus we had to go drive me to school but anyway so my driveway isn't long it's not like long long but i don't i don't know measurement okay i don't know math <laughs> um it it only takes like two minutes to get the end of my driveway so it's not like long long but you and you can still see the porch so, but you have to like shout when you're talking to people if you're at the end of the driveway to the person on the porch or at the door. So me and my mom were, uh, my mom was on the porch. I was out, you know, at the end of the driveway for my bus to pick me up. And it was about five in the morning. Well, no, it was closer to six. Cause I, I left the house around like 5.50 to six. Cause the bus sometimes like didn't have a set time sometimes he'd show up early so i'd rather just go out there a little earlier i want to say it was about 5 56 in the morning and it was still dark out the stars were still twinkling the moon was setting and me and my mom would stargaze in the morning and i need a sip of my coffee 
So we would just stargaze while I was waiting for the bus. And I remember hearing like a gasp. And then she was like, Hunter, 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 look, 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 look. And I, I, I can't see where she's pointing because it's all dark and I'm too far away to really see where she's pointing. It was somewhere up in the sky. <laughs> And I was, I was looking, I was looking so hard. My peepers were peeping. I was, I was trying. I couldn't see anything. And she said, it's a UFO. Like, bitch, where? <laughs> I'm not seeing it. Where? And my bus came and she was gushing. She was so happy to see a UFO. I, I guess it was on a bucket list or something. I don't know. And I get on my my bus, I go to school, I come back, obviously, and I go into the kitchen where she's making dinner. When I get back and I'm like, the hell was that? What do you mean it was a UFO? What 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 did you see exactly? And she got so happy, you guys. She got so happy that she could tell me. <laughs> she she looked at me while she was stirring some of the pasta and she was like, Okay, so it was flashing. It was flashing yellow, and obviously planes don't flash yellow at least none that i know about and it was sh like silverish and shiny are you sure it wasn't a satellite she's like no 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 because it was too close satellites you can't really see well with a telescope you can see them at least here we can kind of see them moving across the night sky they move at relatively a, a slow pace compared to like a, a shooting star and stuff so she was like, no, no, it was too quick to be a satellite. And it was flashing yellow, bright yellow. So, and it was, it was silverish, shiny. I can't tell you how big it was, but it looked like one of those very standard stereotypical UFOs that are flat, <laughs> you know, that people always say they see. It's like, okay. And she's like, yeah, it was a UFO, it was aliens. <laughs> and she's so cute guys, I swear. And I was like, okay, cool. Well, I guess, I guess you saw a UFO and she saw a ufo <laughs> but i believe her because i had an experience with the same thing so now into my stories this did happen before she saw a ufo but i wanted to put all of her stories together so i actually need to pull up clip studio paint because i need to draw like a little bit of a diagram for you because i i don't think i'm gonna word it well so let me just do, do, do. Hold on, I mean, I Hold on. I have so many Clip Studio Paint nulls. I don't. Know. Okay, there we are. Let me just pull up a little thing on the bob. Okay. So my brother has extended family. Pardon, my brother has extended family. I'm gonna try not to blind us with fucking white. There. So my brother has extended family that lives here. We went to go meet them me and my mom uh, and my brother he was the one that drove us but we went to go meet him for the first time and you know parents do what parents do best and they're talking each other's ears off right and um i was around 15 or 16 at this time i was a freshman in high school wait was i 15 or 16 yeah i was 15 or 16 I don't know, maybe as young as 14 uh, but there were other kids at the party, so I went to go hang out with them. They had a trampoline! This was the first time I've ever experienced a trampoline, guys. <laughs> I know, what a what a wild life I live. And we were jumping for, I don't know, an hour or two. And it had gotten late. Um, we could see, like, the house lights, you know, the porch lights and everything. And we could hear the parents talking uh, at the porch. And <clears throat> we were up a little bit of a hill. And we just decided to lay down, chat, you know, get to know each other more. And we were just stargazing, as we do. So the trampoline was like, wow. <laughs> and I was laying on it. <laughs> I don't have my, my uh, drawing tablet <laughs> set up, so we're using the mouse, pardon me. And before I begin into the UFO stuff, you know how like you have a plane right you have a little plane and the plane has a set path so like when you're watching it you can actually tell that it's going pretty straight on that path it's just getting a little farther away from you but it's very much in a straight line okay it, it was dark 
it, the, uh, once again, it always happens at night. UFOs around here always happen at night. I don't know why. This thing was, once again, it was flashing green. Actually, I don't know if people will be able to see that. Hold on, let me get a, a brighter, brighter red here. There we go. This thing was flashing yellow like the one my mom said she saw. Oh, I know, Murphy. I know. It's a tractor outside. It ain't gonna get you. You're okay. So this thing was flashing yellow, like, wah, 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 wah. And it was relatively big, but I noticed that it wasn't going in a straight line like an airplane does. It was going up. It was going up. It was going woo, <laughs> woo. But it wasn't like immediately going up. It was like one of those things where... No, don't let me have this. It was one of those things where it was gradually, slowly going up. And, like, it was it was going away, but up. Slowly. Slowly but surely. And I asked the other kids if they had seen it, and they said no. And it was flashing the whole time. And I don't know a single plane that flashes yellow. I know planes have green and red. I, I know some helicopters do. This, like, we couldn't hear it. It wasn't making a sound. And usually when you're on this mountain, you can hear the plane. In my experience, where I live. Like, you can hear the planes more often than not. And the helicopters. Because we have medical helicopters that fly by to get to town. So, like, you can hear the planes and stuff. But this was silent. It was flashing yellow. And it was gradually going up and away from us. And it was pretty quick. Not like... Not like a satellite. It wasn't slow like a satellite. But it wasn't as quick as a helicopter either. It was like right in the middle. Like it was hovering too. Before it started to slowly ascend to the sky. So I don't know what it was. I really don't. I say it's aliens. <laughs> because I desperately wanted to be aliens. <laughs> but that's my alien spooky story for that and the next one is the the wonder of the universe have you ever seen a meteor <clears throat> not a comet a meteor i have seen two of the same type of meteor the first time i saw it i was with a friend and we were hanging out uh we were gonna have a sleepover at his house and <clears throat> we had just parked and got out of the car and I was reaching into the back seat to get the bag, my bags for the night. And he shuts his door and he's just standing there looking at something. And then he's like, what the fuck is that? And I turn around and there we see this bright green meteor just streaking across the sunset sky because the sun was st starting to slowly set. It was like... <clears throat> The moon was there, but the sun, you know, was slowly going down, so it was a little pinkish, a little orange. And it streaked right past the moon, covered up the moon for a split second, and then blipped out of existence. I was like, that's either a meteor or it's aliens. <laughs> and for anyone who does not know the science behind um, green meteors, they are burning iodine like they have a high concentration of iodine in them i believe it's iodine <clears throat> and that's why they're green that's why they're so green just a fun little tidbit <laughs> and this thing was massive and i i don't know if he still has the pictures or if his ring light still has the video because his ring light caught him asking what the hell that was and then me saying what the hell and he did take like a few pictures. He always has his phone at the ready. That's the kind of friend he is, ready to snap some pictures. <laughs> so I'll have to ask him if he still has those pictures. But if he does, I'll definitely add them. The second time I encountered a meteor like that, once again, it was nighttime. Why does everything happen during nighttime? Oh, so you can't see it right, 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 right. Anyway, the second thing happened, the second meteor happened. I was home with my mom. My brother was at work. 
I had just gotten ready to go to bed. My mom was still going to be up for a few minutes, so the, the living room light was still on. I am positive that if she had gone to bed and the only light source we had in the house was her playing the TV because she can't sleep in silence, this thing would have lit up the entire house. That's how bright it was. So I sleep in the darkness. I am a member of the darkness. I need to sleep in pitch black. And I had just laid down, I had just removed my glasses, and I had just rolled over towards my window, because I have my bed by my window, because I'm a menace to society. And <clears throat> my curtains, they're, they're black, but they're not black-outed curtains, so they have... How do I describe this? I'll have to, like, show you a picture of my curtains, because these are the same curtains in this video, or in the, the story. My curtains are black, but I made the mistake when I put them in the washer, I didn't do it right, so it stripped some of the, the backing off of them. So now they have splotches. You can't, you can kind of see through them when it's light out, but when it's dark, you can't. I've tried, I wanted to make sure they were still safe, otherwise I would have gotten new ones. They look badass though, don't get me wrong, I like this style. <laughs> I'm glad I fucked them up, but uh, they have, you can see in the picture, just part of the backing is stripped off of them because I washed them. <clears throat> These were pulled, they, they were closed on my window. But this meteor, it was like, I want to say it was two or three in the morning, you know, because everything fucking happens during the witching hour. <laughs> and this thing was so bright. It covered my entire room with a green flash of light. And I had just rolled over. I was just about to put my head on the pillow when it f my room flashed a bright fucking green. And I instantly sat up and ripped open my window. I was like, what the fuck is that? And I got flash banged, guys. This thing blepped out of existence the moment I looked at it. It was so bright. I didn't even have my glasses on. It was a blurry bright light of green. And I was just standing, like, like on my bed, kneeling there in disbelief. I'm like, what? What? What the fuck? And I was like, okay, that was either aliens. <laughs> or it was a very, very close meteor. Very close. Like, it had to be so close. Because it was so bright. Had, had all the, the lights in the house been off, it would have coated the entire house in a green light. It had to have been very close to bleep out of existence and be so fucking bright. So it was either aliens or it was a meteor. I'm banking on the meteor, but I couldn't find any reports in my town about other people seeing it. So like, I don't fucking know. I don't know. So just like, you know, the wonder of the universe, it's not really supernatural. It might have been. It could have been aliens in disguise. I don't know. But you know, wonder, wonder of the universe, you know, that I geek out about. <laughs> so, the last and final story. I have pictures. I have so many pictures. <laughs> I actually had to get on my mom's phone to have access to an old Facebook of mine to get these pictures. So you're welcome. <laughs> because the email was old and I never changed it, so I lost that old Facebook. So I had to use... Thank God she was a friend to that account. <laughs> Otherwise, I probably would never have these pictures. But you're welcome. There's a lot. I'll try to keep them on the screen as evenly as possible. So if you want to listen to this in one go and then go back and pause to look at the pictures, you know, you do you however you want. Here's the timestamp for when this one starts. <clears throat> in these pictures, there are some orbs and then there are some that I had taken because I just felt like we were being watched and there's nothing really in them, okay? So, but maybe you'll find something that I overlooked. I don't know. I am also looking at these while I record this audio. So like, we are looking at the same thing roughly. <clears throat> so, 
this happened my sophomore year. I had two best friends at the time. We had a falling out, as you do eventually with high school friends. And her, one of them, I'll call her J, and the other one is K. And then me, obviously. Jay's sister had invited us to go to a haunted hike in a national park that it was a little bit out of the way but it was close to us so we said sure and jay invited me and Kay. and it happened like mid-autumn so in these pictures you can see that the trees are starting to lose their leaves and there's leaves on the floor and everything so the orbs that i assume are orbs are definitely not bugs they're not like fireflies or anything is that a fucking face oh my god wait no is that a fucking face is that a child's face wait i was just starting to oh my god wait okay so there's two orbs in this one but then like to the left there's a fucking face did I miss that? Oh my god. Holy shit. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay. I think I caught a, a child ghost at the cemetery. Okay. Cool. Anyway, moving on. Holy shit. Anyway. So, we pulled into the, um, the forest and everything. And we waited for the forest ranger. This was like a, a thing that they did, you know? So we had to wait for the forest ranger. There was, I want to say like 13 other people uh, besides the four of us because her Jay's sister had invited one of her friends. And <clears throat> the tour started, it, it started at sunset and then like as it gradually grew, you know, night came as she does. <laughs> and I don't remember any of these stories. I remember like there was a shed we went to where the husband passed away in his sleep. That's about it. That's all I remember. And I do want to mention that I did my damnedest to make sure that nobody had their flashlight in the direction of where I was shooting a picture. like. I tried to make sure that they weren't pointing it directly at the camera or to the side of the camera too bad. There are moments where I felt like we were being watched and I asked Kay who had the flashlight to like shoot the light at the ground so I could snap a picture because <clears throat> I was in charge of the camera. And honestly, that's good because I, I don't think Kay was going to be capable of <laughs> uh, holding the camera right because she gets really cold really easily and this happened in autumn so there's a few different pictures of things but we were just walking around you know we were talking listening to the tour guide and everything and snapping pictures we always tried to make sure that we were away from the group but we could still see the group you know so nobody got lost nobody got like you know lost in the woods and there's so many there's so many and it was just a simple little, you know, hike at night with people, you know, with the forest ranger telling ghost stories. And I, I definitely caught some orbs. I swear that's what they are. Because it, it was autumn. It was autumn. <laughs> it, there was no bugs. It gets cold here really quickly and the bugs, they, they leave. It was dead the middle of autumn. So some of these things are definitely not bugs. Now, this one I'm going to show you, we have no idea what this is. We think it's like a group. My friend says that she says, sees a face like right here. I can't see the face. I just see like maybe a group of group of spirits. I don't know. Like I, I, I've seen the child's face and we didn't catch that the first time we were looking back at these videos or these photos. So I don't know. I don't see the face. But obviously, if you see something that I have missed, let me know. Because there were multiple times where I felt like we were just being watched by something, but like not... 
like bad like we weren't in danger unlike in the first video <laughs> with whatever that hell the thing was in the last story but i don't know it was just you know standard haunted hike nothing too much to like some of these things seem very obvious and then others not too much and then of course you just got the pictures where i feel like something was watching us i'm so glad i was able to get these pictures back <laughs> There was- I had to scroll so far on that old Facebook account. Truly. But anyway, there you have it. The, these are the rest of my supernatural experiences until maybe in the future. Me and my friend do plan to go rando nodding again uh, during spring and summer. So this time it'll be warm enough, warm enough for us to leave the car. <laughs> so... Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Do let me know if you did catch something in those photos that I might have overlooked. I did see a lot of orbs. And, and now that ghost child face, I guess, is what it is. I don't know. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. Thank you once again for voting on this story time. There will be more polls of what stories you guys would want to see if I can't pick. And thank you so much. And I will see you in the next one. Bye!